So I'll, um, I'll start. Welcome everybody to this peer-to-peer -peer training session on no climate justice without gender justice. Um, I'm glad that the gender theme has been discussed already in quite a lot of sessions. So I hope that uh, this session will be a nice uh, either reminder, refresher, or um, that you will learn other things from us and that we will learn uh, things from, from how to uh, work on the intersection of climate justice and gender justice from you. Uh, so I'm uh, Aurélie uh, Seinos uh, from Care International and I'm um, a senior technical advisor on adaptation and I have been uh, because gender equality is at the center of care strategy, uh, it is also uh, centered um, in, in our own strategy. Sorry for the sound. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm really glad to have you there. And I'm here today uh, with, uh, with Joy uh, from Care Bangladesh um, and uh, Mim also from Care Bangladesh. So Joy, I let you introduce yourself um, to, to our participant. Uh, hi everyone, uh, myself is Joy. I work for Care Bangladesh Humanitarian and Resilience Program. So I am actually leading the climate change team here in the Bangladesh portfolio. So yeah, I mean, the, the picture you see in the background, uh, I mean, in the slide is from the Uganda CBA when I was in Uganda. I mean, I, I attended the Uganda event. So thank you very much uh, for, for attending this session. We are looking forward to listen and learn from you. Thank you, Joy. And uh, Mimi is also with us, but she, she's experiencing uh, internet issues. So Mim, are you able to introduce yourself? Hi, Orly, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Umimi Mosin from Care Bangladesh. I work as a program associate at the Humanitarian and Resilience Program. Um, I wanted to welcome you all. Uh, let's have a great uh, one and a half hours of uh, learning. Uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so how we have structured the session, uh, so we'll do like a short welcome exercise to get to know each other a bit better um, and have a kind of an icebreaker. Um, then we'll have a, um, a quiz moment uh, to discuss why gender justice is crucial to building climate resilience for all. Uh, so I hope it will be interactive and, and we are looking to hear also from you during that uh, quiz exercise. Uh, so it's not only responding uh, on Mentimeter. Uh, and then we'll jump in on uh, how to, to really integrate uh, gender into CBA work, into community-based adaptation and really going from gender sensitive work to gender transformative. Um, and we'll talk a bit more um, about participatory vulnerability analysis and how we integrate gender into that. And also we'll uh, hear uh, firsthand from, from Joy in particular about how we have been working on that uh, in Bangladesh. Um, and there will be also time for question and answers during the presentation and also comments, suggestions to also hear from you on how you've been doing that or the problems uh, that you might have experienced uh, while integrating uh, gender justice issues into your climate work. So hopefully uh, it will be interactive uh, and we'll have a chance to uh, really discuss that together as it is a peer-to-peer -peer training session and not really like a um, teaching session. Uh, and we'll have approximately one hour and a half together. Um, so first to get to know each other, I'll uh, let the floor to Mim so that she um, facilitate a small exercise with us on, um, on that if connection allows. Yes. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like uh, for us to just, um, uh, I know we have been using Zoom for the last uh, uh, three or four days uh, to participate in the... Uh, 
sorry yes so uh, i know we have been using zoom for the last uh, three or four days uh, to uh, participate in the uh, cba 15 conference so um, hopefully it won't be uh, uh, unusual um, exercise so uh, are we uh, um, familiar with anointed option I mean, of course, ma'am, please go ahead. Okay. Take. So, uh, when, you, when we uh, use the anointed button, um, we can find the option in the uh, bot bottom half or upper half of your Zoom uh, app, um, where we have mute, start video, share option, and participants option. There you can see a view option, and we can see anoint at the top. Can everyone see? Yes. That's, Please feel free to uh, yeah. tell me if there's uh, if anyone can find it. All right. So uh, you will see the anointing tools, and there we have to. Uh, choose a stamp, we can choose either star, heart, or tick button. Uh, I think we can uh, have the that option in the web as well. Um, Yes, and, and people who are on the web, if they can't find the annotate, then you can just put the responses in the chat and that will work just fine, no worries. All right. Um, and then um, we can choose the, uh, I hope we have uh, everyone uh, chosen an anointing button. Um, then we can go to the next slide. So in the next slide, we have a little pre bit preparation to make. Um, we have the time to take uh, tea or coffee. Uh, so I would like to ask your uh, preference. What would you like? Would you like tea or would you like uh, uh, coffee? Uh, you can use the anoint button to uh, uh, direct or if, if you don't like either, you can anoint in the uh, below. I see one person does not like either tea or coffee. Uh, I see mostly people prefer coffee. <laughs> Only four uh, like tea. All right, <laughs> the coffee club has won. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. And there are more coffees in the chat box as well. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's see uh, how um, how much our uh, 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 training session is balanced. Uh, is it biased to women or men, or is there anyone who is a non-binary here? All right. I think we have mostly women participants today. That's great. Uh, and thank you for the mail uh, participants to, uh, for uh, giving us a chance. I mean, that's not great. Actually, I'll differ. I mean, men not taking interest in this session is, is not good. It's not good, I'll say. I mean, that's... You have so we have already found an, an inherent problem. <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about more about, about how to engage men in the session later on, but that's <laughs> indeed um, a good point, Joy. Um, so let's, yeah, let's move on to the next question then. For our next question, we are asking you uh, what you think about your expertise on climate change. Do you think you are a newbie or do you think you are an expert? Uh, can we get some stars and 
uh, tick marks on where you think your expertise lies? Great. There's a great mix of um, expert and newbies. So mostly we are just trying to learn. So I think we are on the middle path. Maybe, we need a little maybe, bit uh, nudging. Yes, Sada? Maybe, yeah, maybe our colleagues are being polite. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the case as well. <laughs> Thank you, Orly. We can move on to the next slide. Yeah, uh, now we, this question is a bit complex. What do you think your uh, expertise on gender is? I think it's a very vague question, but um, what's your take on your expertise? All right, here we are mostly newbies or I think our colleagues are uh, again being a bit uh, uh, shy. Um, or mostly uh, we are here to learn. So let's go to the next slide. Thank you very much, Mim. Uh, I guess it was like just a small exercise I saw um, that some people didn't know about this annotate function. So at least they start learning something. Um, and uh, that, that's great. Um, and also because we are uh, 2026, 20, it's difficult to get to know each other very quickly. So at least we have an idea of who is in the room uh, and it's, it's always helpful. Uh, and uh, hopefully, um, at the end, we can also uh, see uh, each other faces. Um, so I can also put again my video on while talking. Um, so now we'll go into the subject. Um, so the idea is to first in this part, uh, discuss why gender justice is crucial to building climate resilience for all. And maybe having a, like, a, for some it will be a refresher if you're already like, uh, expert on the topic or not not that newbie for others uh, there will be more information uh, but it's it's really a peer-to-peer -peer training exercise so uh, after each question we'll take time to discuss the answer and if you disagree if you have like other thoughts if you want to add something then uh, please feel free to uh, jump in uh, raise your hands um, your virtual and, um, and then we'll, we'll give you the floor uh, so that uh, it's an exchange uh, because we know that climate change is complicated, gender is complicated. So the interaction, like uh, the intersection of both uh, is also uh, not an easy, easy subject. Um, so let's, um, let's start. Uh, so we'll go, we'll use Mentimeter. Uh, so I'll ask everybody to go to menti.com uh, and then you can enter the code um, that I'm putting here in the chat box. So I'll just stop sharing that screen um, and we'll uh, share Mentimeter screen um, so that we can all uh, work on that. Um, let me check. I see some people are starting to join and so. I'll just share my screen. Normally, you're able to see it, um, but you can stay on your your own screen, right? If you prefer, uh, no need to go back to the Zoom. Uh, so you can really stay on your menti.com if you're following from um, from your computer as well. And for those who can, then it can be easier to follow on your um, on your phone than on your computer. Um, I see where we have already like 12 people was uh, joined. We are 26, so maybe a few other people are uh, still joining in. Uh, 
Huh. And you're the unicorn. That's fine. <laughs> My daughter would have loved to be the unicorn as well, I think. <laughs> um, is everybody able to join? Because I can only see 12 people on Mentimeter 13 now. So I'll give you a few more seconds to join. 15, we are almost there. Okay. Good. So uh, let's start then. Um, so there is a timer on the question. And the first one is what is gender equality? Is it equal rights, responsibilities, and opportunities of women and men? Is it the fair treatment of women and men according to their respective needs? Or does it correspond to roles, behaviors, attributes considered appropriate for women and men? You still have 10 seconds to answer. The faster you are, the more points you get. <laughs> times. Uh, great. Um, most of you got the right answer, uh, I think. So that's that's uh, nice to see. Indeed, the first, um, the first re response was um, gender equality. The second one was uh, related to gender equity. And the last one um, is is the definition of gender. Sorry, it's sh it's not the official one because it needs to be shorter for like Mentimeter, but uh, it's the idea behind it. Um, and maybe we can um, share with you the link uh, of the official definition, um, especially from, from UN Women. But um, there are maybe one thing that I would wanted to highlight, like the confusion between gender equality and gender equity is quite high and it's it's, normal and often happening. So I'm not surprised that some of you um, have chosen the second answer. Um, but what is maybe important to say is that most organizations have, have kind of moved away from the gender equity concept, uh, because indeed in that concept, um, there are already like social norms uh, that uh, will um, will decide what is uh, equitable for women or for men. Uh, and so really most organizations are aiming for gender equality. And so uh, I'll just move on to like a, a short illustration of that. But uh, basically um, gender inequality is the first image on the left. Um, then gender equity would be the second image where someone has been given, like the little one has been given uh, um, another box uh, to be higher and to see above the barriers. But gender equality is really about removing the barriers that different people are facing so that everybody can enjoy equal rights, equal opportunities. So I think th this idea of removing the barrier, like in the photo is very, very important in uh, gender equality work. And I think we'll discuss it quite a lot. Um, and uh, I hope um, it will drive our, our conversation um, forward. Um, maybe one additional comment I hear quite a lot about um, the gender equity part is that in that image, sometimes it's very criticized because you can see that that the in the image in the center, the uh, the men, I guess it's a man uh, on on the left, um, has no box left, and it has been kind of given to uh, to the little one uh, on the right. Uh, and indeed, uh, the idea of gender equality is that everybody will thrive. Um, and you're not taking something from someone. Uh, it's just be, thanks to gender equality, then everybody will be better. Uh, and I think it's also um, an important message so that everybody can be engaged. Um, of course, there are some powers that need to be uh, um, left or given away uh, so that everybody can have um, joint decision making or uh, that women can have more power in places where they, they don't have that. But um, yeah, indeed, uh, that's why like gender equality is driving um, most, most organization now and gender equity has been left out a bit. Um, I hope it's, it's helpful because there are quite a lot of confusion. Um, so not sure if someone wants to jump in. I see uh, someone 
in the chat. Um, yeah. Um, someone wants to comment or is not clear about a concept before we, uh, we move on. I see Melvin is also sharing some images. Uh, Yeah, I, I see a question from Julia. What would the fence represent in this image if it applies to everyone? I guess but it just means like the barriers exist for everyone, but some are able not to, um, it's, it's not impeding their rights or opportunities. So the barriers exist, but then it applies only to some people because they are uh, in that image it's because the person is too little, um, but yeah. I think it's helpful um, addition, but those images are only illustration, right? So they are not not perfect, but uh, hopefully it answers your point. May I add, uh, Aurélie, the, about the image? Oh, sorry, uh, about the image I just shared. It's the it's the tree image. I'm not sure if yeah. you know. It's it's all. It also goes to justice. And I like that addition of justice because um, we're not starting from an equal playing field. So um uh, you need like to support that tree as well in order to um uh, help well in this case um a woman or it could be someone from an ethnic minority as well depending on the context um so yeah i i, I would add that one as well yeah i i can't because i'm sharing my screen i can't open it and then show it without like <laughs> mixing everything up but uh i i have seen it and i encourage like other people to look at it as well indeed as you said um yeah we are not um starting on, from the same uh point uh so very important for for gender justice and climate justice um great uh i leave the floor to I don't see any other like ends up or anything. Let me know. Um, you, if I'm showing the response. Um, yeah, okay. I'm not sure why it has moved on to the next question. <laughs> and that is already ticked. Um, so sorry, but Joy, maybe you can comment on the answer already. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? When was it done? Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, my, only one has said 70%. So, actually, it was 70%. So, so, the women and girls are actually more vulnerable than you usually think. It reveals that. So, you see. So, we are, uh, you, I'm sure all of you are very much interested and keep an eye uh, and then very much focused at the way women and girls are, I mean, uh, more impacted than uh, by the disasters, climatic shocks. So still, I can see that, you know, most of you have answered, you have picked like one for 70%. And I mean, how many for 30% and 50%? Can you know already? Yeah. I'm just showing them. Yeah, it's just like, maybe I'm just like checking as people have been able, because I think people have not been able to like answer the question because it went too fast for some reason, even if we tested it yesterday. Um, so have you been able to answer uh, people that are on the call? So, okay, I mean, let, let me shed some light. I'm sure guys, you will agree and would li also like to listen from you. So one is, of course, during disaster, it's, it's very much common that there is a mobility restriction for women and girls, because they sometimes, you know, and also they do not have uh, the access to early warning system as men do, and they are actually not the decision maker. Whenever even if you, you do a evacuation decision, you have to agree. And mostly women have to get sort of the permission or the nod from men. And we have seen cases where men have, you know, evacuated and taken shelter, and women are kept. I mean, they're they're in the they're in the house because they because they think otherwise. If no one is there, the uh, the essentials, the cost, the things will be lost. So you know, they are being exposed. That's that's one thing. 
And there are, there are other areas of looking at this because we have seen uh, from, from experience. For example, if you take a look at Bangladesh, of course, things have changed just drastically. 1991, we had a cyclone. It was devastating. We lost like 138,000 people. And of them, 90% were women and girls. So of course, there are a lot of resources, you know, that, so we understood that uh, uh, the, uh, the things I have just discussed, this was common. There was other thing. There are the social thing. Sometimes women and girls do not learn how to swim. So that happened during tsunami as well. So, and, and then, then we, we, found, we found that there are, there are like, you know, people, you know, there's, there's a very pathetic story, I would say. One father, you know, she was holding on, he was holding on to his daughter and son during Stronsas. And then, you know, when he, when he lost all his, uh, all his strength and he thought that he cannot hold on to both of them, he, he actually let that daughter up. I mean, let her, let her go. And she died, of course, you know, uh, she, I mean, the, the, and, and then he said that he has to hold on to the son because the son will carry on to the family line. You see, I mean, this is how people think. Of course, I am talking a time three decades ago and things have changed because of uh, gender responsive disaster management system in Bangladesh, if you remember, and even a, even a uh, much stronger cyclone in 2007, and that is called Sidor, that, that uh, uh, you know, that cost lives of 3000 people. You see, the number of death has uh, brought, been brought down. And also, you know, uh, that the male female death ratio has also come down from, uh, you know, it's now like one is to five. Uh, it was like, you know, so before it was of the 1000 men, 1000 women, 71 of them died during the earlier cyclone. So now uh, um, of the people who are exposed, uh, men and women, the death ratio are, have actually sort of narrowing down. So that's, things have improved, but I know a lot of, uh, lot of the things we still need to do. And that's, it, it, you, know, you know, depends, I mean, how you work with them, when, how you engage with them. And also, you know, sometimes, you know, it also, it also depends, you know, who is exposed. You know, the exposure is so important and, and, uh, and uh, the challenges are even more, uh, even more for, for women and households. So, yeah, so these are, these are some of, some of our, our insights and I'd like to hear from you guys. I mean, what do you think? I mean, why is that? And uh, are you things, uh, see, are you, do you see things from a different perspective? How are the things in your community, in your country or, or whatever country you work? Anyone from 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 you guys, please. Any thoughts, insights? Anyone? Can you hear me? We can hear you, Joy. I think maybe will uh, people will be less shy uh, when sharing example of what they've been doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's move on to the next question. Uh, maybe on on the point of like, for example, number of deaths by uh, disaggregated by female and male. Not that still quite a lot of people are not disaggregating the data. So that's why why uh, it's not like that. Um, available and we have been using like old data uh, because it's not always yeah easy to get those data so um, yeah yeah you know some of them didn't see the question at all so you know i mean couldn't yeah yeah exactly so let's let's move on to the next question um hopefully ah uh, i'm not sure like why why is that uh <laughs> sorry for this like hiccup with mentimeter i'm not sure why um the answers is already presented, uh, so maybe we will just uh, just discuss the answers. Sorry for that, uh, guys. It's less interactive. <laughs> uh, really sorry, but you know, I mean, I mean. Le, le, so any of you, I mean, of course you know. Uh, of course, uh, this is what it happens. 
So whenever there's an out migration of male, you know, of course, there are many ways women are impacted. So here, the options are decreased workload, decreased risks of expulsion and sexual violence. And another option was increased autonomy and decision-making power. So I would uh, rather like to listen from any of you. I mean, especially our one of our women participant. How do you look at things? I mean, why does it happen like this? So you see, the correct answer is a pretty much positive thing. Uh, the the uh, the outcome of a negative thing of out migration of men mostly happen. You know, usually men take the migration decision. And in many cases, they just leave the leave the women and family behind, and sometimes they do not actually care. I mean, they do not send money or cannot send money, whatever. So, so there can be many implications. So you see that one of the implications, which is actually shown correct here, is increased autonomy and decision making power. So this is a positive outcome of a negative thing. So, uh, can anyone shed light on this? Anybody? Or uh, please raise hand. I or see Zinat. Oh, uh, hi, uh, hi. Uh, 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 my, my name is Zinat. So uh, regarding this issue, I have a little observation that I was working with a community in Rema Kalinga forest. So that when I was uh, taking information from the men, and after that, I was moving to the women for uh, asking them and uh, taking their decision about forest management and other things. So what I noticed that men are, uh, are saying to me that women doesn't know anything. They don't know anything. And, and I, I, they were a very older uh, men, you know, and, I, and as a student when I was there, so it was a very challenge for me to say to them that, no, I think they, this woman knows something. So then I told them that no, they women they also know about this management of forest or they have some issues. So I'm going to talk with them. So when I eventually go to the women and talk to them, they didn't say anything. They said we don't know about the management. And then I was so surprised and so heartbreaking. The people were also there. They are saying that these women don't know anything, and it was proven that they actually don't know about the manage uh, forest management. And then I realized what well, actually what is the reason because. Uh, I think that when their man is present, the woman, they don't get the uh, like, chance to take the decision for the family and they don't also put themselves on the position that they have the quality to take the decision. And, uh, and uh, that is my observation that the woman, their mindset was the reason. And when there is a no man in the fa uh, family, you know, then they have to take that uh, everything on their shoulder and move on. So. That is the that is the opportunity created by negative way that men are not there and they are then taking the decision and yeah yeah I mean I mean that's that's very interesting observation Gina so you are talking about Kalinga right part of India oh, no Rema Kalinga in uh, Molubi Bajar uh, uh, Silet oh oh it's Kalinga it's in Bangladesh okay so yeah. yeah so that's 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 very interesting so Gina yeah so this happens I mean. A, 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 any other any other thoughts or examples from other parts of the world? I see Melvin has. Uh, yes, Melvin, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. I think Anupama was first, so maybe you can go first, Anupama, and then I'll follow. Thank you, Melvin. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Anupama from Nepal, and uh, where we walk, and we we walk for uh, we work in the hilly regions of our country, and and almost more than ninety percent of male are the migration. Mig they migrate to the India for the job, and the women they they are who are living at the community they have to decide uh, like um, although they, they they lack some emotional support but um, they may they have increased the workload because the men are out of the house they, they need to do out out hold course and household course as well so 
while we go to the comedy we can see that the the, the, the women they now can not only they can decide for their family they are also deciding and uh, giving the decisions for their community as well either it is being the community the um, the community in activities that are being intervented by the projects or that is also um, in the case of their family as well so um, these cases have shown that it, it has really increased their decision power within the family and within the community they work and they are they are also representing in many uh, many uh, common institutionals like they are increasing their leadership powers they are raising their voice and they are working in collaborations with government as well so there are many examples that can lead to this example as well so Thank yeah you. i mean i mean that's that's good examples uh, so yeah i mean uh, after 2015 earthquake you know i was in nepal for two weeks uh, you know so I, I found families. I found families with uh, no male members or no young male members because they are working outside in India or in the Middle East. So yeah, so that's that's a whole different story. I mean, not only that because uh, Nepal is also missing agricultural workforce because the young men are outside. That's uh, another challenge for Nepal as well. So yeah, I mean, I, I have seen young and older women you know, they are, they are actually taking care of their family. And during those tough days, actually, mobile network was not there. So they had to take all the responsibilities and decisions. And then they had to even fetch for support from national, international agencies. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's the, you know, whenever there's a hard time we have seen in the, you know, across the world, it's the women, the women who take their shared responsibilities, who keep, keep their cool and actually actually you know move move along and, and let all move along so still i mean there with their i mean people say i mean men say that they don't know anything uh, just what we heard a minutes ago so yeah so so these are inherent issues uh, melvin please yeah, thank you. Um, I think the uh, response to this question is really context specific. So um, apparently it had some positive impacts uh, in the cases you just shared. Uh, but I think there are also numerous cases where that is not necessarily the case. Um, I know, for example, in Southwest Bangladesh, where water logging um, happens frequently or sometimes it, it just remains throughout the year. Um, men tend to um, migrate to the cities and uh, women and children are often uh, left behind and it has exposed them, especially during emergencies, to uh, sexual harassment, uh, but it also leaves them quite vulnerable in terms of food security and just uh, uh, in terms of capital. Um, so I think it, it really is context specific, so I would be a bit wary um, in, in making this a very definite, definite answer. Yeah, good observation. Thank you. So we can move along. Next question. Aurelie, now Mentimeter is fixed. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, let's let's try to uh, move on uh, to question four, um, which is not appearing. I don't know. I don't know what's happening with the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll just move on to like globally some of the barriers to women. I'm sorry with the the ECAP with Mentimeter. Um, that's yeah, we tested it. It worked just fine yesterday, but that's uh, how it is. Um, the the last question was really about um, some of the barriers to adaptation for women, and uh, as Melvin just said, um, it's global figures, so the reality will differ from places to places. So that's really important to uh, to remember. Uh, but globally, only between ten or twenty percent of uh, landholders are women. Uh, they also receive less agricultural extension services in most places um, and also have less access to credit. Um, and I think it's important to highlight here because indeed um, those um, problems, issues, uh, might have a very significant impact on the uh, possibilities for women uh, to take on adaptation options that are uh, available to others. Uh, but some men might fa face the same issue, right? Uh, so 
indeed we'll talk more about the, the really the need for a strong gender uh, analysis and vulnerability analysis that takes into account um, uh, disaggregated data. Uh, but indeed, that's the reality worldwide. And so that's um, a tension point uh, to look at when doing a vulnerability analysis. Um, land access, uh, access to extension services, access to credit, um, and the, the reality is very different for men and women. Um, so uh, I, yeah, that's a few examples, right? Um, we also, like the question was also about the time spent on household food preparation by women. That is uh, generally uh, up to 85% um, compared to men. So indeed the fact that they are spending a lot of time on uh, household food preparation can prevent them uh, to uh, have more time to um, work on adaptation, test adaptation option, or, uh, or like go to some like training from agricultural extension services. Um, so indeed, uh, that, that are important things to, um, to recall. Um, so globally, um, what we are discussing in care is that we are talking about a double injustice. There is the first climate injustice uh, that lies in the fact that people who are living in poverty are the most affected by climate change and have limited resources to face extreme and increasingly uh, unpredictable weather condition. And there are gender inequalities that uh, comes on top of that um, and that um, can limit the opportunities and resources uh, for for women and girls, um, but also from um, from some for some men uh, and and boys, and um, indeed we we have not uh, put a slide on intersec intersectionality, uh, but it has been discussed in other session uh, of CBA. But indeed, um, gender gender inequalities intersect with other um, factors of discrimination, such, such as ethnicity. Um, disabilities, age, etc. Uh, so indeed it needs to be looked at um, in a more inclusive way. Um, and those two um, injustices uh, have an impact on the level of vulnerability, the resources and the adaptation option that people uh, of all gender um, have access to. Um, and the other thing is that the community-based adaptation work or the adaptation option that are proposed also have an impact, a differentiated impact on people. Uh, so it's also something that we need to look at uh, in our programming. Uh, so that's uh, what we'll be discussing in the second part of, of our uh, session. Uh, and maybe someone wants to jump in um, at that stage before we move on to the second part. I don't see any ends up, so we'll just we'll just move on. Uh, Stefan, do you want? Yes, to... hello. Uh, just just a very quick mention. I'm working for Friendship NGO in uh, in Bangladesh. Also, so we're talking a lot about Bangladesh, but. Uh, it's one of the most exposed countries to, to climate change. Uh, I would like just to mention a study that was made by IIED um, last year, or no, in, in uh, uh, 2019, uh, about how, how households in Bangladesh are spending too much. And there is also an insight about um, female-headed households spend three times more as a share of their income than households headed by men. So it means that uh, these households uh, headed by women are really um, facing climate disasters always and always depending on aid and relief. And so if you don't, do, don't improve their economic ability to face climate change, they will always depend on relief and they, they cannot re reach resilience. And Friendship has, has put a very interesting program to shift from uh, aid and relief dependence to more resilience in improving their income. So, so uh, it's really important to work on that aspect as well, improving the income of, of, of women, especially uh, there. I will put the link to the, the study. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and did it say. So. <laughs> Thank you. I really like this, this study because it's really, uh, really, really interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that the list can be long, so unfortunately, uh, of things that can uh, prevent women to, to adapt. Um, and so thank you for sharing an additional link that can uh, inspire us to, um, to really be careful when we are carrying analysis. And we'll discuss it a bit again after, but um, that's that's very important point. So thanks, uh, thanks for the additional resources. Um, we'll just move on, we'll uh, try to move on to the second part. I'm sure that Mentimeter will not work again <laughs> for the next question, but uh, we'll do otherwise, that's fine. Um, so as I told you in the very beginning, um, so the idea of this second part is really to move on, on to like what we can include in our CBA, uh, community-based adaptation work, so that it becomes gender sensitive or gender transformative. Um, and so uh, I'll just move on to next slide. Um, if it, are you able to, um, on your Mentimeter, we are asking you what activities you need to integrate in CBA programs and projects to make them gender sensitive or gender transformative. Normally on your Mentimeter, you should be able to input something <laughs> uh, there um, so that we like, yeah ideas of things that you have been uh, integrated in your programming, in your CBA programming, so that um, they become gender sensitive or gender transformative. And we'll discuss a bit more what is gender sensitive and transformative ap uh, afterwards. But uh, um, uh, I see Melvin saying it's working again. So thank you, Melvin. <laughs> but I can't see any, ah, yeah, success stories, Jesse strategy and framework. Any other ideas from others? Advocacy at high level. We'll give you a couple of minutes to um, input what you've been um, doing. Tailored uh, specifically to what women say they need. Context analysis, gender analysis. Human rights mention, safe spaces, women-led adaptation models, advocacy at local level and at local to national level and ensuring women participation. Okay, I think that's good, good ideas already. Internal reflection, how are we doing with our colleagues in our space? Present report, women only dialogues, workshop spaces. Now that we will like, we will share with all of you the results, right? They will be accessible, we'll post them on Slack. Uh, so so that if you need ideas about how to integrate gender, you can also come back to that. Um, so, and we will comment on it, right? So no worries, but according to CARE's uh, gender equality framework that you might not be familiar, but you can try to guess, uh, to be gender transformative, CBA project should work on building agency, transforming structures, and what is the last, uh, last one? Uh, changing laws, changing relation, building women's skills, uh, or changing um, social norm. I see some answers coming in. Uh, there are a few more changing laws, social norms. I think most of you have answered, so I'll just like, yeah, sorry. Okay, so 
the right answer for care is changing relations. So the, the one that nobody took, uh, but that's that's totally fine. Um, and indeed, I'll just show the graph where we are presenting um, our framework. Um, and it's also a matter of like what sometimes, but uh, indeed, um, most of, of programs start with building agency, which does correspond for us to building the skills. Um, of women, but also of, of men, depending on the analysis that has been done, um, and of other like non-binary people. And so most programming will will often take care, at least in care, take care of that part, really uh, trying to focus on women's specific needs, men's specific needs, and responding to those needs. Um, and changing relation for us, it's really on um, we talked a little bit about the fact that there were not so many men uh, in um, in the list of participants, but changing relationship is really ensuring that uh, men and uh, more globally poor olders are supportive and are trying to uh, engage in gender equality dialogues and action. Um, and um, that's uh, there is a lot of activities we could put uh, under that. Um, so uh, I think it's a very important part of the work uh, that we could include um, in um, in CBA work, and we'll uh, give a bit more example just after from our Care Bangladesh uh, office. Uh, and transforming structure within transforming structures, we are. Um, in, the, in care, uh, including all the work that needs to be done to transform uh, the laws, change the laws uh, and the social norms. Um, and so within that, uh, all the uh, advocacy activities that you have highlighted will fall uh, under that. Um, and so that's uh, the three pillar and we are checking, uh, we can share like after the session, we can share additional um, tools, but uh, indeed we have a gender marker where we are checking if all our projects, including our climate change project, are uh, checking the different, like are working on the different pillars to make sure that um, we are going from a gender sensitive project that generally focus on building agency to a more transformative project where we are trying to uh, ensure equal relationship um, and um, also an enabling environment that is supportive of gender equality. Um, so it might mean like including uh, gender into uh, climate change laws or climate change policies, etc. Um, so I'll just give the floor uh, to uh, to Joy, and I will share again my um, the PowerPoint so that indeed you can give more example about what's being done in Bangladesh. Um, on, on that, uh, so let me go back. Um, and then you can ask all, all your question uh, after the presentation. Oh, uh, thank you, Early. So yeah, so this particular example is from one of our projects in Bangladesh. Actually, it was a multi-country project, but Bangladesh was one of the focus country. It was uh, funded by Prince Albert Foundation, and it was, uh, uh, we call it weather rainfalls. So in name has some significance. Basically, we wanted to uh, provide solutions to farmers, particularly women. I mean, uh, the, the problems, the challenges they are facing because of the erratic rainfall pattern due to climate change. So that's how it was named. So we supported like more than 6,000 farmers in, in, in 20 villages of Bangladesh. And we particularly followed um, an approach which is called, which is called uh, super. Super means you know, is sustainable, profitable, equitable, and resilient. You see, that's sustainable, profitable, equitable. That's equitable is very much important for our discussion because that's what we are really fo focusing. That's where we can bring on the gender discussion in the, into the table. So, yeah. So, and, and in doing so, what we did, you know, is you look at the perspective. So perspective is, of course, Bangladesh has, uh, you know, in, in, in the overall farming, 46% of the 
uh, women are actually contributing and the world for the among the overall farming population so and but you know apart from that 77 percent of the women you know they're they're like working from dawn to dusk so still is the men who are called farmers and when you talk about women they are like you know at best you can call them helpers you know in bangla, in bangla they said they're the helpers they are not really the farmers but you see they are actually uh, working like male in the fields and in not only in, in in plowing but also in harvesting you know storing and even marketing but they do not have any right they have you know they are not even called farmers Joy, we can't hear you anymore. You hear me? Back? Yeah, now that it. Yeah, Let's go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so you see that, so there are like barriers. So, I mean, what could be the barriers? So if you look at the barriers over the world and it can vary from society to society, even in a, in a single country, but these are mostly similar, similar in the sense, you know, when you talk about burden of work, household chores, you know, you'll find uh, especially in Bangladesh and in, in the particular region in India, Indian subcontinent, you know, most of the women, you know, they work more than eight hours a day, and that's absolutely unpaid labor. So they they they're working, and 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 of course they they work so much uh, on household chores, you know, that they have less free time uh, than than um, than men uh, to involve in economic activities. Although they are supporting uh, farming activities, as I said they are not recognized as farmers they are they are just helpers so yeah you know so and only only a few percent of them especially in bangladesh only 4% of women have ownership in land so that's very critical so when you do not have ownership uh, uh, on land so you do not have naturally you do not have access to access to credits because in most of the cases the credits are tied to land so that they want they want lands as collateral for for credits in most of the countries you know as the law says that so that when women have do not have any right on land so the naturally they're 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 marginalized and they're deprived from inputs even if they get a chance uh, to do something so in terms of extension agents uh, in, in many countries uh, there are you know in a very extensive agricultural extension departments people working in the field providing support to farmers but you know since women are not the landowners they do not have access you know you know and and those extension services are actually heavily male staffed so because of the social social uh, you know taboo or things usually sometimes uh, not really sometimes usually women are less you know not really comfortable to interact with these male extension workers so that's one of uh, other barriers so that's that is also something uh, i mean how you recruit people you also need to have be you know keep an eye i mean what are you what do you want to do when you want to provide any type of extension services to people whether it's agricultural livestock or anything so yeah, i mean you need to target people and you need to recruit people accordingly so these are male dominant group of people who are providing the extension services so yeah and since they do not have any right on land they since they are they are all regarded as uh, as uh, helpers they are you know they 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 cannot have any they cannot make any decision in terms of what to do how to do when to sell what to sell let alone any right on 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 the on the income from from the farming so and yeah and 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 uh, when when uh, we uh, bangladesh or other countries, they will have, you know, there are many, many plans, like for example, we have this climate change gender action plan, but this is hardly being integrated in, in policies and actions. So you know, the picture you're uh, uh, looking at, you see that they, we have we have been actually building agency, uh, already, already uh, explained to you how gender empowerment framework works for care. So we build agency, we build agency, to, we capacitate them, on many aspects with with uh, with uh, flood tolerant varieties we also uh, i mean uh, engage them with uh, uh, 
in a way made the made a group they we had many different approaches one of them is farmers field school with that so different group of women they exchange views i mean their their challenges their successes the techniques they are using so that that has uh, the, you know they, they share their views and learn from each other and feel like they're they're also contributing uh, uh, to for the overall welfare of the society not only for for themselves so it also feel them empowered so we actually uh, through the women we actually introduced the third crop from for them third crop was in this case the third crop was mustard so so that is also uh, some sort of transformation in terms of you know uh, production because that that gave them uh, you know more resource to work with for the next season so yeah and and the, the all sorts of capacity building you see the vermi compost you know they, they through this you know that is also environmental aspect so with more production of vermi compost in the in their community people you know you know shifted away from using mechanical uh, 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 chemical fertilizer to vermi compost so that's that's something very organic uh, we introduced within the community community next please so yeah i mean when when you work uh, work for uh, uh, to to uh, to change gender relations so there is one major thing you have to do you have to actually look at the gender relations so you have to actually you are looking to redefine gender roles and that is so important because without that we cannot ensure equitable distribution i mean for whether it is agricultural or family duties so what we did in this particular project we did a gender gap analysis so gender gap analysis is another tool of course you know many of the agencies use that so gender and with that we also formed a gender action plan so our women our participants they worked they engaged with male and they actually sort of found together what are the type of activities especially the family familial role the the household activities that they can share with their spouse share means you know that the spouse especially the you know the male take more responsibility instead of women so if you look at the uh, look at the info infograph there so there are those 12 activities so if you can if you pick any of them you know anything so for example boiling peri so that's preparing so so before when uh, so we found that only 27% 22% of the role was being taken by male so and for 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 feeding cow so you see it was previously it was 78% for male only 22% of the activities or roles are being taken care of by women but so we engaged with them because we we just didn't impose them they they basically worked together and agreed that the males are going to take more responsibilities for these household activities so through that gender action plan you know after working for 9 months after 3 quarter what he found that the overall role distribution for family activities rose from 22% to 67% as a huge huge change of relations you know change so so that that when this can happen in a household so you see one of the major thing we did that we sort of co-created this we didn't actually tell that you need to do this basically it's, it it is it is between the spouses basically it is the family decision who do who does what there is nothing called male's job or female's job or third gender job so we are human being we can do anything you know it is it's we are equally capable so what it did through this exercise you know our women the women of weather rainfall groups they gained on an average 2 to 4 hours a day you know so so that is that is that was huge bonus for them because then they use that hours to do for example homestead gardening farming activities vermi composting those income generating activities so so this is how a gen, we can change gender relations you know through through a gender action plan of course it has to be co created next one please
yeah. So transforming structure. So we said, we talked about agency. We talked about changing relations. Now we'll talk about the third pillar of the um, empowerment frame, framework. So that is transforming structure. So, you know, uh, through our activities, you know, what, there are a few things, few things happen. So one is, of course, uh, since, since they have the capacity, they are uh, earning already and their, their decision-making power already, you know, they, it was visible and they shared that they, they can now suggest their spouse. This is how to do, this is what to do. They can take decision in terms of sending their children to school, marrying of the daughter or not, those major things. And then, and we could establish some, some very important linkages, which, we, which I discussed at the beginning that they do not have agro climate services, the extension services. Now that they are already demonstrating their capacity. And of course we engaged with the uh, service providers. So we brought them together and they are one of the major recipients like male count counterparts uh, for the services, what the agricultural extension departments are providing in that uh, in the in the area. So, you know, you know, we also give them ID cards. So, you know, Bangladesh is this agri ID cards is being provided to millions of farmers. And, but if you look at the numbers, you know, those are more, 90% of them are, and even more than 90% of them are male. So we introduced that. So these women are given uh, agri ID cards. So we have seen, we have, we have seen that this is possible. This is possible when you work alongside a community and also uh, government, especially local government. So it's not something unachievable. It is possible to, to achieve these changes uh, uh, using a very planned structure. Uh, but you have to actually work along the three pathways. You have to work for transforming the structure, changing relations, and of course, you have to build agency. So, so this is how we, we, we did it in Hydra Impulse. Next. Uh, so, you know, we have some policy recommendations, of course, you know, that's very obvious. But, you know, sometimes it's more about enacting new, uh, more, I mean, uh, implementing policy rather than enacting new policies. Because in, in a more often or not, you will find that there are actually policies, but those are not being implemented. So one is, of course, we want recognition of women far farmers. And of course, if there are third, third gendered uh, farmers, of course, they need recognition as well. So in, we, but we want some changes in the policy. There are many good things in the policy, but we have to say male and female farmers, just not farmers. Sometimes, you know, this common name, that doesn't help us. So if you really want uh, to, uh, uh, to work to capacitate women farmers or women as a whole or, and give them their, uh, their deserved recognition, you have to actually give them the name, the identity that they are also farmers. So that's why the female farmers thing has to be in the policy document and in the strategy documents. The other things, you know, that, that we believe that, that we have to firstly you know, accept that there are our gender discrimination. Unless we accept the problem, we can't bring any solution. So yeah, and once we accept that, then you can find out what are the inherent issues in a particular community, in a particular service provider that are stopping us or barring them to provide equitable services, if not equal services. It's not even me. So, so sometimes, you know, you know, so it's important that we 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 recognize those issues and then then you know uh, uh, the, as i said there there could be many policies like bangladesh has this they call it cc gap climate change gender action plan the purpose of this this is not a separate plan or strategy per se this is actually something through that uh, document the government emphasized that everything every department every service provider has to integrate this action plan, the recommendation, the way they provide services, that they way they reach people, the way they look at the problems. But this has not happened, of course. You know, it's not easy. Like, like you know, like we heard that males saying that they do not understand anything, that they, 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 they are, you know, dumb. 
So the, the, when there are those taboos, when there are those, you know, inherent beliefs or inherently injected, you know, uh, patriarchic uh, uh, thinking dynamics in the society, it's not easy. So we have to be uh, really work hard on this. You know, we need to push, push the society. We need to engage with men because without engaging with men, we cannot bring the changes. Sometimes we work in silo, we work, we focus fully on women and do not engage with men. And then there is no chance it, because, you know, the male, they feel like, you know, an insecure, what's going on? What are they talking with my wives? What are they talking with my daughters? But if you engage them, and one of the best way I would say, you know, usually fathers are very affectionate to their daughters, irrespective of whatever uh, strata of the society he belongs to. So if you bring on the issues and tell him and explain him how his daughters or daughter or daughters are going to be marginalized, undermined, then, you know, it is easier for you to nudge them. That's one of the easier ploys I would say, is, uh, I would say. and that really works, you know, because they are, they love their daughters mostly in most cases. So, yeah, and so that's what we did in you know, the rainfall and, and bring, brought the changes. Of course, it's only a part of Bangladesh society, say, um, you know, country of 180 million. So we can't say that we did um, uh, did much, but this is something which uh, which is replicable, we believe. And of course, and, and it can be adopted in, in, in any parts of the world, we believe. The, so this is, uh, uh, this is something, and also we'd like to hear from you. And I think we can now discuss uh, on this experience, where the rainfall experience in Bangladesh, and, and also uh, get a few examples from you. Thank you, Jai, uh, for, for the presentation. And indeed, we have like a few minutes for any uh, question or reflection from um, the participants. And maybe I'll um, also after, I'll just post on, on, on Slack uh, a methodology that we have in care called social analysis and action, where it really highlight that the changes need to come first from um, our own organization. So like staff, men and women needs to be really like, uh, trained on gender, they need to question their own stereotype so that then they, they are able to facilitate properly any uh, social norms and, and, and relation change. Um, and that's, yeah, very important point, I think, uh, for us all to, to remember. We all have stereotypes, uh, and so we need to be aware of those so that we can um, work with them uh, and, and also carry out um, great gender transformative work. Um, so any any question? I haven't seen any. I, I see a question in the chat uh, from Marcela. Do Bangladeshi female farmers in general accept their perceived role of helpers or are they aware of this injustice? Let me take this. Okay. Do Bangladeshi female farmers in general accept their perceived role of helpers? Are they? Yes, yes. They do, they do. So that's how, you know, so you have to really make them aware of their role. I mean, the, how much they're doing. You know, sometimes, you know, they, they, they accept it uh, not, not really gleefully, I would say. They sort of think that that's their fit. But we have to, uh, I mean, make a case that's not really their fit. So we can change, things can be changed. So yeah, Marcela, you want to speak as well? Dada Dina has her hand raised. Yeah, yeah please Dinat. go ahead. Please, Dina, go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I really like the uh, policy recommendation you have made that recognition and the gender uh, sensitive services. So um, I'm working with friendship and I'm working in the very, you know, the uh, people who are living in in the river ice man. So I had deprived from all the services. So it is the recognition of women's role. It I feel like 
the women in, they are the heroes at not, not like not now they are working for their families for a, like thousand and hundred years it's not a new thing that time that they are looking at something on their own so that recognition of their work was uh, missing and uh, i don't know why because the men they their, of their hierarchy or that open their mindset or they, they don't have their voices so uh, uh, for me to me they they are the heroes and they have been this is, uh, as you recommend as a policy i feel like that uh, yes there is a trauma actually or there for it's happening for a long time that when i talk with the women in the river island they say they don't eat zinat for days to avoid going to the toilet they they uh, they worried about their hygiene they are worried about their uh, harassment this try there and zinat i'm yes. i'm sorry because Hello? it's getting it's getting a lot Can you hear it's, me? yeah it's breaking a lot but uh, mm -hmm. so maybe if you can like type in the 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 remaining of your, of your story but i think what i take like at least what we have heard is like women are heroes and that indeed like inequalities have been yeah. happening for thousand years and then uh, there is uh, yeah a need to uh, really like uh, break down that uh, that history uh, and patriarchy um, so hopefully i'm like translating well what you been trying to say and I'm sorry uh, if it's not uh, true to your exact words um, and I see a comment from Ashmita as well if she has very good stories from uh, their project on breaking the stereotype from female for mitigating their risk to disaster so if you have that documented please do share a link Ashmita because we will put everything together from what people have shared um, as we really do believe there are a lot of, of very good example out there that we can all learn from. So um, I see Stefan, you have like yeah. your mic uh, open. So if you want to jump yeah. in as well. Uh, yeah, since I'm also with Friendship, I can maybe add some some information from Friendship with uh, what uh, Zinat was saying. And just uh, uh, mentioning that uh, confidence is really important for the women, uh, confidence in themselves. And uh, a lot of the work of, of Friendship is about empowerment of the women. Uh, uh, in, in remote communities, uh, Zinat was talking about the uh, riverine islands uh, in northern Bangladesh. And uh, I will just tell you the, the story. The, the first time I went to Bangladesh, uh, we went to uh, an island where friendship was still not working. And it was amazing how, so we were several, uh, you know, uh, friendship staff from Bangladesh and several people from Europe. And all the women were hiding you know, uh, behind the houses, they, they, they did not uh, 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 they did not come to us. They were really hiding and really shy. I came I came there. I went there uh, two years after that, after two years of work uh, of friendship in this uh, uh, village, and it was very surprising how then at that time the men who at the first time were coming to us and were uh, drawing all attention on them. The second time they were the second time I went there after two years of work with friendship with the women, uh, women then came more. Uh, yeah, they just came to us and there was no problem. And the men, the men were just not there anymore. They were just working and they did not care about our presence. So uh, you, you, I, I could really see a shift in confidence and empowerment of the women because they. Uh, they receive like uh, links with the government services. They, they receive uh, uh, adult learning, uh, literacy, uh, and everything to make them more confident. And we, in in one uh, in another village, we also see a woman who was so confident that then she was uh, elected at, at the local regional elections. Uh, so it was really a, it's a really an achievement. You can really see the difference. Uh, or how these, these women are empowered. 
and we also use the some charity theaters to 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 raise awareness on on social problems uh domestic violence and so on so uh yeah just i, I just wanted to mention this this uh, uh examples on 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 how you can really change the mentalities quite quickly yeah, thank you, Stephanie. It's, it's in, inspiring, right. I guess. Um, and also to see, indeed, like it's building agency and empowerment and leadership, uh, and at the same time, working with the others so that they accept um, this change and they support it. And even like, uh, for example, voting for a woman uh, as part of like uh, official election. So that's um, really nice to hear. Because we are a bit late, I'm, I'm obliged to move on. Um, we wanted to share like, um, like a bit about gender sensitive vulnerability analysis. We have said that it needs to be at the heart and at the start of every project. So um, I'll just like take five minutes to, to go around that. Um, we have a, a tool in care uh, for participatory vulnerability analysis. It's called the CVCA and uh, we can share the link with you as well um, in the chat box. Um, and it was developed in, in 2009, so pretty, uh, yeah, 10 years ago. And we have revised it uh, so that it in integrates better gender consideration. So that's why we will just focus on that. Um, and, and, and what it means, but um, there are different things to pay attention to when doing um, participatory vulnerability analysis and you want to integrate gender. Uh, first is about gender sensitive facilitation. And um, I think it's very important to, um, so that women can participate uh, to plan and set up the session when they are available. And eventually, uh, if there are constraints uh, about mobility issue, for example, um, or if there are constraints about, um, for example, uh, when it's being done in the day, then making sure that everybody can participate equally and, and adjust according to that. Uh, there is also a lot of um, attention to pay to the, the skills of the facilitation team. Uh, and sometimes also of, of gender of the facilitation team so that um, all groups uh, feel comfortable uh, sharing their experience. Um, and sometimes men might be more comfortable with a man and women with a woman in terms of facilitation. So, um, but it depends on, on, on areas, right? Uh, then a uh, specific question for session and then we'll go into more uh, we'll go more into that just after and the composition of the groups um, and someone raised that uh, in in previous uh, ideas for how to integrate gender in in um, CBA work but safe space is important so uh, all participants need to be uh, safe uh, feel safe uh, in, in those exercises and uh, we need to value their knowledge. Uh, sometimes it means that we also need to um, adjust the pace of the session so that we have enough time for people that uh, might need more time to express themselves to just, just have that time. So uh, this is very important and language, language and visuals are also important because we might uh, be using uh, complicated words that sometimes have no translation in local language. So it's really important to take some time to, to work on that beforehand. So that's um, a few things for gender sensitive facilitation. And in areas where uh, women, like because sometimes we just look at how many women have participated in the exercise and we say, okay, uh, it's half, half, so we've ticked a box, but uh, in it, we need active participation. Uh, and so all those tips are important. And sometimes we even need to do like some pre-work uh, on confidence uh, with some women's group so that when the meetings come, then they feel uh, comfortable enough to, to speak. So it really depends on, on on how things are uh, going on in, in a community. Um, in the CVCA, we have had it like two uh, specific gender tools, like all the tools are integrating question about uh, like needs to collect disaggregated data. But those two tools are really looking at um, some of, of the things that we've, um, that can shape gender inequalities. Uh, the first tool is daily clock, where we are looking at how 
um, the different tasks of the day are split up uh, between uh, men and women, and especially what what a day looks like for women. Um, in terms of uh, in times of crisis, uh, climate related crisis, and in normal times, and and uh, looking at how um, this daily clock is changing. Um, and the other tool is pile sorting, where we are asking uh, who is um, taking the decision on most important things. So either it could be men, women, or uh, it could be a joint decision. Um, and we same thing, we are looking at decision making in normal times and decision making when there is a climate uh, related shocks or stresses, it could be drought or uh, floods, uh, depending on the on on the area and the most likely uh, shocks and stresses. So um, you can look at the tool, right? Uh, but uh, at least it gives you an idea of specific uh, community tool that we are using. And they are good starting point uh, because, for example, we have used it in Bangladesh. Uh, we have used both tools and especially the daily clock. And the daily clock was one of the starting point for the discussion about who is doing what in the household and how we can share uh, the burden of all those tasks uh, because women it indeed were like having no spare time uh, during the day, whereas like men had uh, three to five hours. Uh, so, um, and within the, the guide, we also have like specific, when we have collected the data, then after for the analysis, we have specific gender related question to guide the analysis. So the idea is to make sure that in all our analysis, we make sure that we are highlighting specific mm -hmm. impacts for women and men, uh, and also how women and men are responding differently to the different climate risk. We also make sure that we are um, integrating the specific capacities of men and women, um, and also the different bias they are uh, facing. And the last point that we have discussed a little bit less during the session is really to see uh, what options are available to support adaptation. Uh, while also advancing gender equality. So making sure that the adaptation option that we are proposing are really also um, empowering women, accessible to women and not increasing burden for women, um, etc. So or having impact on, on gender based violence, for example. So that's also very important. Uh, it's not only what are the differentiated impact, but also what are the impacts on gender equality of our own adaptation work. Um, so that's for the gender analysis. I went very quickly because we were running out of time, but um, I like if you have any question on that, um, then uh, we will be happy to like answer like them in writing or on Slack, we can go on with the discussion. Um, and just the last, last slide, a kind of a summary of what we said, um, we've done a, a publication that tries to summarize what we need to integrate in our uh, CBA work uh, in to make it gender transformative. And we kind of divided it in six, uh, six main action. Uh, we discussed integrating gender responsive and transformative interventions. So that helps to build agency, to uh, transform structure and change relation. We also like talked about investing in context specific analysis that integrate gender. And the four other things that we haven't, like we didn't have time to, to do everything in one hour and a half, but uh, that are more related to the project cycle is making sure that you have a, a theory of change, a gendered theory of change, and you have related objective on, uh, on gender for your CBA work, uh, because we think it's very important and it will uh, also drive the efforts uh, of your project, that you make sure that you have some indicators that help monitor changes in gender equality in relation or um, between men and women, or what we said about like leadership, or uh, we have like, for example, in care, one of our comp compulsory indicator uh, or global indicator is about a uh, number of women that are able to take part into formal or informal uh, decision-making making spaces um, that you also you need to also be careful about uh, your plan and budget for gender expertise uh, because even if you have people that are sensitized on gender if they don't have 
time and budget to really apply it might be complicated. And also that you integrate gender training into the life of the project, because um, as we say, the changes begin with us. Uh, and so we need to uh, really question our own stereotype uh, if we want to work on gender um, in the best way possible and gender equality. So yeah, those um, are very, very short summary uh, of what needs to be integrated. We hope it's helpful. It, it can be used like as kind of a checklist. Um, and we have a gender marker. So if some of you are interested, we can share more resources because we have like some videos around the marker. Um, so Hopefully it's helpful and we just wanted to like say thank you and maybe answer a few last question uh, from, from you uh, before closing. Stefan, I see your mic. Open. I'm sorry, I, 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 <laughs> I think I speak too much. Uh, actually, it's not a question, it's maybe a, a, a call to all the participants here. Uh, you know, uh, there is COP26 in, in November, and I think uh, gender, uh, climate justice and gender equality should be at the top of their agenda. And I said their agenda, the organizers, uh, you know that gender balance is not at all a reality within these uh, COP negotiations. So uh, I think civil society organizations should really bring that topic uh, to the top. So we at Friendship strongly believe that uh, we have something to show and prove to all the uh, policymakers and deciders at, at the COP26. So we would like to be part of, uh, uh, so we will be attending the COP26 and we would like to be part of a, a conference of our, our session or a, a workshop to show the climate solutions and the gender inclusivity, uh, gender in inclusion. Um, so if one of you is uh, ready to partner with us or uh, invite us or whatever, so that it's just a call to, to action to, to, to make it happen. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Stefan. I think, yeah, uh, we, we need to get, the, like, get a small group from the gender people in, in the CBA conference. And there is a Slack uh, channel, so hopefully, like, uh, those who are interested can join. It's gender and intersectionality. intersectionality sorry, uh, and maybe um, in terms of links to to COP26, there is a campaign called "She Changes um, Climate." So maybe if like people are interested, they can also look at that. Um, yeah, we we know that. Yeah. So great. Um, is there? Anyone else uh, who wants to share something? Um, I don't see any uh, any ends up. Um, so, Joy, do you want to say a last uh, last word we, before we close? Yeah, thank you, Arlie, and thank you, everyone. I mean, I mean, the, as Arlie was telling, you know, it's really a so much a broad thing and so much you know it's not really possible to cover the pertinent aspects within one and a half hour and actually we i'm sure that we miss a lot of, of your insights but i'm sure also sure that we'll meet somewhere or emit somewhere because these days are days of emitting so yeah if there is a cop who knows we'll meet some of you there so it's, it's great to have your insights and there is one no one single solution or no one single way how you can uh, deal with this issue and of course there is a framework but actually you have to adopt the framework i mean there the frameworks are fine but you have to actually adopt it uh, but also when you adopt it uh, you know i'm not saying that we need to we should compromise we need to adopt according to the challenges not to compromise so that's my last thing Let's not compromise with this uh, gendered <laughs> relations. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. So, and um, if everybody agrees, we can try to have a small like uh, end end uh, uh, photo. Uh, if you can open your cameras, uh, all of you, and I'll just like I see like some people have already left, but uh, we can take a last photo and and just like yeah, call it an end. Okay, I see most people have opened. Still a few missing.
<laughs> yeah, no problem for those who do not, does not have a camera. Um, okay, so I'll count one, two, three, and then we can smile. <laughs> one, two, three. Thank you, everybody. And I, I, we hope, uh, sorry for like finishing late. We hope you've enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we would have liked to cover so much more. Uh, but yeah, maybe for the next session. Uh, there is another session from uh, CDK at 5 uh, p.m. UK time on gender as well, if, um, if some people have missed it. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.